guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome to week one on DraftKings, where we're going to build lineups for you. We're not going to build them for you. Sorry, it's a misnomer. I'm going to build them with you. I'm going to help you guys by answering questions from my Twitch chat for about 45 minutes to an hour. As long as they have questions, I'm going to stay here and answer them to the best of my ability. If you wanted a quicker and easier way to go about things, in our community Discord, smizzle.tv slash Discord, the Smiz Gang Discord, uh, in previous years, I was writing an article for ESPN called Best Buys. It was an ESPN Plus piece. I'm no longer writing that article. It was too tough for me during my week to put out all the content that I put out for you guys, stream on Twitch and everything else. I have consolidated that article, which was like a 2,000 word article. It took me hours to write every single week down to a nice nifty handy cheat sheet that exists in our Discord for YouTube channel members. You can click the join button right below or you can go to smizzle.tv slash join. Uh, you go to smizzle.tv slash discord. That will give you access when you link your YouTube to Discord to that cheat sheet every single week. Cash game plays, best stacks, cheap stacks, uh, top value plays, and uh, players that uh, project for under 10% ownership. All there, very easy to consume, quicker thoughts, easier for me to produce, and it's a big value add for the YouTube channel members here or the Twitch subscribers. Either sub gets you all the same perms for that. So let me bring in the chat. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, and let's go! He's a legend. Smith's Gang Listener League is up for week one. It is like gonna fill. It's probably gonna fill really early once this video is released on YouTube, which if you're watching this, it is released on YouTube. Uh, 3,000 roughly people have already joined. 5,500 entrants this week, $10, three max, absolutely no rake. The best tournament that is out there on DraftKings. You will not find it in the lobby, and the only way to join it is to go to smizzle.tv slash links. You can join the uh, Listener League there. You can join the Discord from there. Follow me on Instagram, all the other stuff. Smizzle.tv slash links will take you there. I will shout out the winners on the Al Smizzle Fantasy Football Channel's week one recap video that comes out every single Monday. And in week 18, we're going to do a tournament of champions, a battle royale uh, for all of the winners. Weeks 1 through 17 with some really fun prizes that we're going to get put to that as well. So let's get to uh, the chat. Let's bring them in here. How's it going, chat? What do you guys have? YouTubers are wild. Yes, we are. Cheat sheet is amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I tried to make it as good a value add as I could possibly make it and as easy to consume as possible so that you guys could build the lineups that you want. Be them cash game or tournament. Uh, and do them smartly, because that's really what all of us want to do. We want to build the smartest lineups that we can. Let's start here, because I get this asked at the beginning of every single season. How much should I spend? If I have this much money, what should I enter? What should I do? If you're a small bankrolled player, you really, really, really need to concentrate on getting as many different opponents as you can at the $1, 2 and $5 uh, buy-in range in head-to-head -head games. Very easy to do that. Create a head-to-head create like 10 of them for $1. Make sure that you limit your opponents to one. There's a drop down menu on DraftKings. You limit them to one. Uh, get in some small entry contests. The 100 man tournaments are fine. Those are $1, $2 also. You're gonna use more of a GPP approach in those. Your cash game approach is different from your GPP approach. We have channels where people discuss all of this in Discord as well. So you can jump into Discord. If you're a channel member, you get access to the VIP section where you can talk about this with our entire community. Uh, and come up with the best strategies. We also typically have a cash game group that gets together. I think y'all get together on Friday night. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat, where you guys get together and really try to come up with an optimal cash game lineup on Friday and Saturday nights in the voice chat area. So get after it. How much is a small bankroll? It's relative to me. Like somebody who's playing less than $200 a week on a main slate Sunday, that's a small bankroll player, right? And that's fine. Not everybody has you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of disposable income to enter into high stakes games or mid stakes games on DraftKings. Like if you're playing $100 a week, you're, you're a small bankrolled player. You're not entering 25 and $50 games at that price, which is kind of the mid range player where they're entering, let's say 500 to $1,000 a week. And somebody entering 5K and above is a high stakes player. McLaurin, good to go. That's good news. I do want to touch on the cover boy because I know that there's going to be reply guys right down there in the replies that are going to be telling me, hey, Ramondre missed practice. Ramondre Stevenson missed the media section of practice. He was not there when the media was allowed on the field. He might have been in the training room getting treatment. He might have been doing something else. 
Who knows? He is expected to play this Sunday. Yes, missing a Friday practice is typically something that we look at as a big red flag and a problem. Monitor the situation as the weekend goes along. And then here's the other thing. If Ramondre Stevenson does not play, if he's inactive, and you will get word an hour and a half before that game kicks off, don't play him. But as of now, we're playing him. That's what we're doing. Ramondre hates yum yum sauce. We had a whole talk before this. Chat loves to make me go off the, the rails. They, they love to make me go off the rails. Let's let's open up DraftKings real quick because I'm not seeing very many questions uh, in the chat. Let's go through some cash game options for this week. This slate, when we first saw it on like the way too early first look, when things first came out, it looked like it was extremely tight specifically for a week one slate. Looking at the different projection sets that I've looked at, it still does look that way when the mid and the high tier players uh, come into play. Not a lot of values in the mid to high tier. Guys who are projecting at like, you know, three points per dollar, guys who are jumping off the page on a bunch of different projection sets. So DraftKings did ratchet up the pricing a little bit or enough that it makes lineup building uncomfortable until there were this many injuries that opened up all the value spots that are there across the board. Cup is out opening up a uh, major value on the Rams with 2-2 Atwell. There's going to be another receiver that plays, probably Van Jefferson. Uh, you might get a third receiver like Puka Nakua, uh, whose name I absolutely love. Higby is going to be extremely chalkish as well. So like looking at the Rams specifically, they're going to be extremely popular. One, Higby in games where Cup didn't play, we saw a tremendous floor of targets from him. We also saw a ceiling in that game against Denver. I was at this game. At SoFi, they scored 51 points. Their point output is probably going to be usually without Cooper Cup, and all th this is going to be a bad team. Uh, but he's going to get peppered with volume. That's all you need. 4,800. You can get cheaper at tight end if you want to, uh, but Cup being out opens up 30 to 35 percent of the target market share for other guys on this team. So looking at the wide receivers, you now have Jefferson. He's 4,700. I don't know that he can carry or command a ton of targets as the primary guy. Ben Skoranek, like he's, I guess he's all right. Tutu Atwell, I think has the best athletic profile of the group, can at least break a longer play. He's 3K and is going to be tremendously popular this week. Uh, and then Puka Nakua, uh, the rookie who got a ton of praise in the offseason. At quarterback, uh, so like, Let's plug in Tutu at all because I believe that he is going to be the chalk because we're such a projection-driven game at this point. At quarterback, I think there's two options. You could pay up Lamar, Hurts, Fields. I think Hurts is going to be the most popular cash game option at the higher-priced plays. But I also think, and we do like to lean on these running quarterbacks in cash, that AR-15, Anthony Richardson, is going to be... 5,600 is too cheap for a rushing quarterback. We saw this last season. We saw this last season. Remember when Justin Fields was like in the five case and they, they started letting him run? Yes, he pooped the bed against Houston. 11, 17, 19, 24, 26, 45, until they finally bumped him up to this 6,500 range. These are very conservative passing lines. 28, 23, 21, 27 attempts, 21 attempts. I think that we're going to see very similar... Um, play calling, game planning for Richardson as the Bears showed with Fields last year. I am not expecting over 25 pass attempts from Anthony Richardson. I could be fully wrong about that. If I am wrong about that, then that just means that he's got even more upside with the fact that I think he has to run seven to 10 times a game. He has to run seven to 10 times a game. That means 50 to 60 rushing yards a game. He starts every game with six fantasy points without scoring a rushing touchdown. If he is to score, let's say eight on the season, that's a half of a touchdown, add three more points. Now he's starting the game with nine points before he throws a pass for 5,600. If you don't trust it, pay up. You can certainly afford it. There's so much value out there this week. Tons of wide receivers under 4K uh, that you can use to ease value. Tons of running backs under 6K that you could use for value plays. Um, let's see. We're not going to, you can start, let's start at 6K. You can start with Ken Walker going up against the Rams. They're going to be a bad defense. Yes, Aaron Donald's in the middle. Um, Ken Walker's going to have value. He just is. Not perfect for DraftKings. Not a guy that I think I want to play in cash games. I think it's a fantastic tournament play. Uh, 
Sanders against Atlanta, probably not going to be going there. Love running backs against Denver, but I'm not going to pay for Javante Williams in week one because I'm not sure of what his snap percentage is going to be. And there is a player on his own team who they went out to go get and paid a lot of money. They specifically picked him to be the guy, whether it was to spell um, Javante or to kind of be a 50% guy, but he fits the Sean Payton offense very well. He's down at 5,100. Rashad White at 5,500 is a cash game consideration play. Uh, I'm not going to go with Swift in that spot. Not going to go there. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Five box running back Jamal Williams. That is a crazy picture. Jamal. <laughs> this is the most Jamal Williams headshot of all time. I love this. We have to protect this man at all costs. He's fantastic. I like him as a player. Loved him on hard knocks in the locker room. Amazing interview. We must protect this man. Yeah, he might go super scion against Tennessee. We'll see. Samaj P. Ryan, also fantastic play this weekend. Possible five box running back. Brian Robinson Jr., at least four of them boxes are filled out. And because we, you know, we always ascribe these players that they're never going to be involved in the passing game. Like Isaiah Pacheco, who caught like four or five balls last night on Thursday Night Football. Plenty of options at running back uh, for you to go with. And if you went with this, I believe the cash game defense is going to be somebody like the Commanders, um, the Patriots, even though it's against Philadelphia. I think the Patriots are going to have to throw more. Teams at home, week one, offenses do kind of lag a little bit. Packers against uh, Chicago is going to be popular, though I like to attack higher volume passing game offenses, and I don't think Chicago is going to be a high volume pass game offense. You can't score points on defense, uh, or sorry, there are more opportunities to score points on defense against a team that's going to drop back 35 to 45 times and a team that's going to drop back 20 to 25 times. Uh, if you wanted to attack with the Titans defense, I'm not going to use the Cardinals. If you wanted to get really cheap with like the Raiders against Russ with how bad he looked at 2,300. You have three spots to fill and you have $7,900 left. So it's a Starzy Scrubsy week for sure on DraftKings. It, it's very easy. Uh, the cash game lineup can kind of build itself. It's just going to do what it do. If you use the Superflex, it comes from Fandle. You can go either two key. Okay, I have not played around with the Superflex stuff. I do want to play around with that a little bit. We could do it later in the show if you want to and maybe you know put together a lineup on DraftKings with Superflex. Uh, but but let's get to that later because it's it's a smaller... Those are the smaller prize pools, right? That's, that's smaller stuff. Those aren't really... Big. How many tight ends do I play for 150 max? So unless I'm taking a stand on a tight end, and again... There's not one way to do this, guys. So don't take notes of, well, Al says play four tight ends. Like, or Al play says play 15 tight ends. Play how you like. I play within specific guidelines. I don't want to call them rules because you can break them, right? They're, they're more guidelines. Where like, my pass catchers are going to be guys that typically are going to correlate with their quarterback or as a bring back. Every once in a while, you get a tight end that you'd like, you know, remember the remember the flow chart, tight ends against the Raiders, tight ends against Arizona. We're like, I'm just stuffing those tight ends in there. And I don't care about correlation because you know they're just going to score. And like, you could correlate them, but like, you don't have to. So my tight ends vary with the uh, amount of quarterbacks and or pass catchers that I play. But uh, my player pool typically tends to be smaller than many players. I think I use like a 60 to 80 player pool over 150 lineups. I'm, I'm way more consolidated than most mass entry players are mass multi-entry players are watch out for musgrave this week everybody else is hurt we knew that laporta was going to play a ton of snaps we believe and knew that musgrave is going to play a lot of snaps he was drafted to be the tight end there how many points does a low salary qb need to win a tournament so depends on the tournament size if you're playing smaller field tournaments the amount that you're going to need to score typically is going to be lower than a massive large field like the millionaire maker if you want to win the Millionaire Maker, plan to score 250 points. What is your path? How do you get there? So it has less to do with the salary you spend and more to do with the amount of touchdowns and yards that your guys can accrue. Value goes out the window in tournaments. Value is for cash games. Tournaments are for ceiling. Attack it. No Greg Dorch situation this week that I see. We're like, here's a guy we know is going to get like six to eight targets. I don't I don't see that. There's definite value plays like 2-2 Atwell, uh, like uh, Marvin Mims Jr. There, there's receivers under like Elijah. There's plenty of cheap receivers out there that we know are going to get some some looks. So like I'm not I'm not stressing the cheap the cheap wide receivers. Not doing that. Here's what I want to do now though. I want to build a pick 'em on underdog. I'm going to build a pick 'em on underdog, but I'm going to do it a different way. 
because there is now a tool that we can use over at unabatedsports.com. Go to smizzle.tv slash bet. You get a five-day free trial. You can use that on Saturday college football. If you get in today, this video comes out on Friday. If you're watching this on Saturday morning, you can use their betting tools for uh, Saturday football. You can use or college football. You can use it for Sunday NFL, Sunday night football, Monday night football. Five-day free trial. I can't negotiate any better than free for you guys. It's free for five days. Their tools are outstanding. You're going to want to click this uh, premium package. I don't think the early bird exists anymore. I think this uh, evaporated on Thursday night. Click the, the full year and you get the five-day free trial. Uh, use my code SMIZ at checkout if you do not use the link. Uh, and then we're going to go here. You can enter your own projections for this. I have not seen what they have yet. I know that we're going to be able to have some other ones. Let's refresh. We're going to go to NFL. Right now, let's just use number five projections because because they're in there. We'll go with this. We'll get rid of college football, WNBA, and NFL. We will isolate to the main slate. Let's isolate to the main slate. Boom, get rid of this and this, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, here's these games. Here's what we have over on underdog. You get to see the edge on all of these things. Lower receipt. Should we just pick the hires? Should we pick like three of the best hires? Okay, higher, higher, who's higher? Nick Chubb, higher? Of course he is. Puka Nakua, higher? Ooh. All right, I'm going to go with these three. So it says Najee Harris, Antonio Gibson, and Nick Chubb are the three highest ones. So Chubb, higher rushing yards. Was it rushing yards on all three? Higher rush yards for Antonio Gibson? Yeah, three running backs. There you go. So we got Chubb, we have Harris, higher rushing yards, and we have uh, Gibson. They say higher than 28 rushing yards. $50. Uh, we're going to try and win 300 with this one. Click submit. If you do not have an account over at Underdog Fantasy, use promo code Al Smizzle. You get up to $100 free deposit uh, bonus on your first deposit to the site. A-L-S-M-I-Z-Z-L-E, all one word. Go check out all their fun stuff and go check out all the great stuff over at Unabated Sports. Pow. I like that. Yeah, overs. We could bet the lowers. It's Look, it's sharper to bet the unders. It is, but I want to enjoy myself on a Sunday. I don't want to sit there and... Root for and watch bad football. Can you imagine a worse life than sitting there going, I hope they punt more. Can I do a battle royale? Not during this video. I typically, I like the battle royales on underdog. I really do. Uh, it's like a six round draft, five or six, I forget. And it's GPP style. There's six teams in it. They take like 15 minutes to draft. They're fantastic. I really do enjoy doing them. Uh, I go on Friday afternoons and sit there for an hour or two hours, and I'll do like five or six, seven of them. And they're fun. They're really great. I know that a couple of people in our community won them last year as well. So should be uh, should be a good time. Punt fest. Punt fests are the worst. Do you guys really have like no questions this week? You guys have it all figured out. Oh, I know what it is. You saw the cheat sheet already. Y'all are in the Discord. See, look at all the badges by everybody here in chat. Everybody in the chat has badges already. So they are in Discord, and they've seen the cheat sheet, and they're like, I got no questions. I got this. Cheat sheet is fire. Cheat sheet is golden. Look, I hope that it's on point. If we can hit at the rates we've hit historically with Best Buys, then the cheat sheet's fine. What should a Ravens double stack look like? That's a good question. I like that. Let's go over to DraftKings. Look at it. And I know that we're going to get this question. Do I have to double stack Lamar Jackson? If you plan on winning a tournament, you probably should, right? If you plan on winning a tournament, you probably should double stack Lamar Jackson. The player that I use, because it's the same thing, do I have to double, double stack Jalen Hurts? If you plan on winning a tournament, you probably should stack Jalen Hurts. I've given this speech at least on two other videos this week. Stop worrying about the outcomes in the games where the guy is not going to win you a tournament. This 21-point output from Jalen Hurts in Week 9 against Houston was not winning you a GPP. So it doesn't matter if you played him alone or if you played him stacked with two guys or one guy and brought him back with a, somebody on the other team. It doesn't matter. You ain't winning. You weren't winning when he had 22.8 points. You weren't winning when he had 16.9 points, okay? You weren't winning when he had 27. The games that you're isolating for when you double stack are the games where they have 30 plus DraftKings points. And on those days, you can take a look at the passing numbers over here and it doesn't matter what the rushing numbers are because even on this day with 39 points, three rushing touchdowns, 61 yards, he still completed 22 passes for 315 yards. Somebody got the bonus 
two receivers probably had greater than 20 points that day. Definitely one of them did. Uh, and there were a couple days that he did something like that. I think there was one where he had no touchdowns. Like, this might be the day against Chicago. Where like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith both had 100 yards receiving, no touchdowns, and both got there for tournament value. Uh, and Jalen Hurts was the quarterback of that lineup and dragged two guys along with him. So it's isolated to those days that they have those monster days. No different from Lamar Jackson. A little bit uh, smaller sample size in terms of games played last year. But 16 points, you weren't winning. 17 points, you weren't winning a tournament. These two weeks, you were winning tournaments. 48.6 DraftKings points. Ran for 100 yards on the ground and a touchdown in both of those days. Four touchdown passes, three touchdown passes. So if we isolate for those days, you're only playing for the top 1% outcomes from these quarterbacks. On the days that they have that top 1% outcome, who are the receivers that can do the work? Well, if we're using Baltimore, this cat can do it. Monitor the injury that he's dealing with. He was limited on Thursday. Monitor the injury report from Friday. Check everything out on the weekend. If he is out, that opens up a lot of value. Right now, he would be the primary guy. But if he's out, it's likely that Isaiah is going to be extremely popular on Sunday if Mark Andrews does not play. At wide receiver, you have options. Pay attention to this one. Bateman not listed. Not listed on the injury list. On the injury list for week one. Fully recovered from last year's list, Frank. Foot surgery, ready to go for the Sunday season opener. Bateman was a big difference maker for uh, Lamar Jackson as a passer in the games that both were active last year. I kind of lean towards Bateman uh, over all the other wide receivers. I understand the value that you get going down to somebody like Zay Flowers, uh, who has been the camp darling and looked really fantastic. He's 4K. Uh, if you want to get different, I think Odell Beckham Jr. will be the lowest played of the trio of wide receivers on this team. There are your five options. I would narrow it down to two. The question is, can Houston score enough points to utilize as a bring back? Well, if you're using two of the wide receivers, I would probably opt for somebody like Dalton Schultz as a bring back. If they do keep it close, Schultz is going to have to get peppered with targets. If you wanted to go wide receiver, uh, I think it's Nico Collins has the best floor ceiling combination. Ended the season with what 36 targets in the last four games that he played uh last year they're going to lean on the progression of this player as a professional wide receiver in the league a lot this year so he is the biggest floor ceiling combo i think that woods is fine but not thrilling he's nice i like him as a player uh local product here in los angeles but from a gpp perspective it's going to be hard for him uh to sustain as bring back play. The bring back play is probably the toughest part of that stack, at least to me. Lamar Andrews Flowers says weather cop. Yeah, I don't disagree. That's fine. Andrews is the key, so monitor that uh, throughout. Any love for Mixon or ETN this week? For what specifically? Like, we have to go deeper than that. Are we talking cash? I think Mixon's fine for cash. I don't love ETN. For GPP, uh, I think ETN's good for GPP. Would I consider no bring back from Houston? I probably wouldn't. I get it if you don't want to. If I stack Lamar, I'm going to have a Houston player in that lineup. But with as much value as is out there right now, and you're just like, look, I'm going to attack the 27-point total there, and I'm going to get a, a superstar secondary stack somewhere else, and I'm not going to correlate. I'm just going to use one of the super value plays to make it all work. Like, I think that's in play. If Judy is a no, and I believe that Judy is going to be a no, do I like Sutton and Cash? Yes. At well over Mims, coin flip. I don't think it's impossible to tell the difference between the two. They're the same guy. One has a higher, I mean, they're the same guy from a fantasy outlook perspective and usage perspective. They're not the same guy as prospects. Tutu Atwell, not as good a receiver uh, as Mims from a prospect profile sort of way, but he runs different routes. He's differently sized. If Watson is out, Jay Reed is another 3K guy. Yes, if Watson's out. Charbonnet and autoplay if K. Will is out. Or, oh, KW the third, Ken Walker. Is Ken Walker out? When did this happen? What did I miss? Did something break when I was on the air? Ken Walker limited Thursday's practice due to a groin injury. Walker's, I never pay much attention to Thursday. Like Thursday, we've done this before, right? Wednesday, like I, it's like a half a ear. If I'm a dog, I'm it's not like something, I heard something in the other room. Thursday, like my ears kind of perk up. Friday, if they miss Friday practice, then like I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. You know, Friday practice report, like that's a big siren. That's a big red flag if they miss Friday's practice. So let's wait for the Seahawks practice report. See if he went today before we make a decision there. And yes, if Ken Walker is out, 
then Charbonnet becomes a, another smash value play. Like we needed more value plays on this slate with the absolute tsunami of value that we already have. Deion Jackson, cash game viable. Yeah, he's 4,100. I like him less than the guys that are a thousand more. Did we get clarity on the Deion Jackson or Hull thing? I mean, we're never going to get clarity. Jackson's the starter. I believe he'll play 60% of the time, maybe 65. And I think Hull will play 35 to 40. Would be my most educated guess on that split. Any running backs? I'm okay stacking with quarterbacks, just CMC. Um, my typical rule for that is a to stack a running back with a quarterback, it has to be a running back that profiles to get 15% or more of the target market share from his quarterback. So right now, it's probably just Eckler. Historically, it's included CMC as well. I'm sure there are more that you could do that with. It's not a terrible rule. If a team scores 35 plus points, a running back and a quarterback can go off, but typically they are diametrically opposed uh, to one another. Ramondre, yeah, but are we really stacking up Mac Jones against Philly? Like, it'll be contrarian, but I don't know if you need to get contrarian with that. There's a lot of really low. Uh, there, there's so many guys. Again, check the cheat sheet and just look at the amount of players that high ceiling players that I listed that are sub 10% on the week. And like I went through and I aggregated from four different sites to get the, the, the aggregated projection on percentage owned. And I used that. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to lean on one site for their projection on percentage owned. I'm going to look at across four different sites. Let's put them all in. Let's average them all out. And I picked a bunch of dudes that were under 10% across, you know, on aggregate to give you guys the cheat sheet of the low owned plays. So like, woof. How will Kellen Moore affect Eckler? Eckler's Eckler. That offense, I think, is a rocket ship. I'm willing to be wrong on that, but I don't think I'm on an island there. I think that that offense has a major correction coming this year. Call it year over year flop lag, however you want to look at it, right? Like last year, they were everybody's darlings, kind of like, the Jaguars are this year, and he threw for 5,000 yards, but they were so frustrating to watch. Watching Herbert average five yards per target, five air yards per target on first and second downs was like, I wanted to strangle my television. So knowing what Kellen Moore has done, allowing a quarterback like Dak Prescott to throw the ball further downfield, to challenge, to attack, um, so much Herbert hype. Why? I mean, he's really good. <laughs> he's a he's an extremely talented player. Uh, they have tremendous weapons who are all healthy around him. They added to those weapons with draft equity. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnson, Josh Palmer is back. Gerald Everett, a tight end who is a good pass catcher, probably better route running and pass catching than Dalton Schultz, who thrived in Kellen Moore's offense before. There's a lot of things to like there. Good offensive line, good enough for them to throw behind. Fantasy Carnival, maybe. Dak finally got better weapons at wide receiver. Did he? I don't know, man. Three years ago when they had C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Amari Cooper, that was a good receiving room. Naked Herbert since he has so many weapons? Negative. Cooks disrespect? No, love Brandon Cooks. But he's not as good as Amari Cooper and a pre-ACL Gallup. <laughs> With Kellen Moore out in Dallas, what do you do with your 2022 Rainmakers cards? Damn it! <laughs> Can't go one show! You played him. Gallup should be back up, hopefully. I think so, too. I think Gallup is fine. Uh, who to stack and bring back with Cousin? Okay, let's look. Let's do that. Let's go over here. You are talking about Minnesota and Tampa Bay, which are right here. So you want to stack Cousins. 37 fantasy points, 460. 28 fantasy points, 425, right? He could have a ceiling game. He could. I probably like Baker better. Could be wrong. I think they're similar median and ceiling guys for 1,400 less. But we can stack Cousins. Uh, he's locked. So if I'm stacking Kirk Cousins and I'm building in a lineup builder, right? I am definitely putting in a rule that says any lineup that has Kirk Cousins, Jefferson must include one Justin Jefferson. I'm not fading him if I'm playing him. I kind of feel like I like Jefferson better as a secondary stack this week, and he's so easy to get to. Like it's so it's so easy to, to get him into lineups this week with with as much value as is out there. Your bringbacks are, oh so, sorry sorry, forgot. First of all, if you want to take the leap with Jordan Addison, very talented pedigreed wide receiver at fifty one hundred, 
that's fine. I think he's third in terms of target market share. I think that TJ Hawkinson is the most obvious stack at 5,900. You're going to get different by paying up at tight end uh, and paying up here, uh, which is going to force you onto some chalky value, but everybody's going to be on the chalky value. So like, it's okay to have a couple pieces of chalk in your lineup as long as you surround them uh, with stuff that's different. It's very easy to get different with double stack and bring back this week. And then on the other side, you have your choice of Evans, Godwin, White. You know, that's your choice. Chat asked, uh, is Evans a go? Evans was not listed on the Buccaneers injury report. That was Wednesday. Monitor the Friday practice report. So this, these are your three options. White will be the most chalky. Then probably Godwin. Evans has the most touchdown upside of the trio. Uh, we've seen two, three touchdown games from him in the past. One of the league leaders going into last season in terms of trailing three years touchdowns, obviously not playing with Tom Brady anymore or Jameis at the beginning end of that uh, is going to make a difference. You know, Baker is not either of those two in terms of passing acumen, but from a one game standpoint, any one of these three could go off. Godwin Moore with targets and catches white with the combo of a running back. Who's going to catch a lot of passes. If he does run in a short touchdown, that just helps our cause. Uh, Evans is the most contrarian of the trio and it leaves you with more than enough money uh, with the values that are out there everywhere and a defense to be able to get after it. Is Judy a go? Without looking yet, okay? I have not looked. Without looking, I'm going to say no, but like, who knows? Hamstrings are not something that you want to mess with, right? Typically, it's an easy injury to see reoccurrences of. It's not something that they're like the Wu-Tang of injuries. Hamstrings are the Wu-Tang clan of injuries, right? Hamstrings, injuries ain't nothing to f*** with. That's, that's what we're dealing with here. So like, if I'm the coach, much like you guys asked me the other day about Kelsey, right? If you, would you play Kelsey? No, I would not play Kelsey. You got, you're a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. All he can do is make it worse. In week one. So you lose a game, whatever. Instead of going 13 and three, you're going to go 12 and four. You'll be fine, right? If you lose that game because of him. They didn't lose that game because Kelsey didn't play. They lost that game because they dropped every ball. One of the drops turned into a touchdown the other way. They lost by one. Um, so let's take a look over here at Judy. Limited participant Thursday. Watch the Friday. His reps were capped. Keith, never believe what the player says. He believes he'll be able to suit up Sunday. He has to say that. J.K. Dobbins thought he was going to suit up last year in week one, too. He didn't suit up for like a month. So, like, I personally don't think he plays. What I think happens if he does play is it holds down Cortland Sutton's number. Not his statistical output, but the amount of people who aren't going to flock to him because, well, Judy's there. Can't play Sutton now. I think that Sutton's going to be able to command more targets. If Judy's out there, it's going to be one of those... Is he active or is he active situations, which also means that I think uh, the number on Marvin Mims is going to be held down as well. Those are my full thoughts, which is why I like this show every Friday, because like people ask me a question on Twitter or they ask me a question in reply. It's like, I can't give you my long form answer. So I appreciate you guys being here. Drop a like on the video if you haven't already. If you're still watching here 40 minutes into the video, it's clear that you appreciate the stuff. Also, I know that like 40% to 45% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So again, if you're here, click the subscribe button, ring that notification bell. I come out with like a ton of videos, every single week, both here and on the Al Smizzle Fantasy Football channel. So I appreciate you being here. Go do it. Still up for a super flex? Yeah, we could do a super flex. Let's, let's do that. Let's do a super flex and then we'll get out of here. Where is super flex? Where is, okay, I'm in the lobby. Super flex, right there, a big shiny new button on it. I have a ticket. I could play this. $10 super flex special. Enter. All right. So we got quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers instead of three. Have to play a tight end, a flex, and a super flex. Must have missed the RM pack cracks. We're going to do that on stream afterward. I'll make it into shorts content. I got two packs. We're going to do them later. Sorry, YouTube. You'll see them on shorts if they're good. If they suck, you won't see them. All right. So who are we playing? Chat, you build the lineup. Who do you want to play? Give me... This is a tournament, so we're building a tournament lineup. I say that we single stack, not double stack in this one. I say that we... Double stacking QBs from the same game would be an interesting play. That would be a solid play. How about we just do that? How about we see if we could stack, I don't know, the best game on the slate? Can we get there? No, that's not what I said to do. That. All right, can we get there? Or are they too expensive? Can we do it? Yeah, we're. it's super flex. It's a different game. So I'm going to stack one from each quarterback. So I need Tyreek. I want Mike Williams. 
I'll stack one more there. We'll go with Gerald Everett. We'll fill the tight end spot. 5,700 remaining. This is easy. Hell, we could even play Eckler in this lineup. We're not going to play Eckler. T-Law Richardson, Love Fields, Baker and Cousin. Y'all are nuts. Lamar and Richardson. Interesting. Quinton, I don't think he's going to play all that many snaps this week. Mix and Amari for secondary correlation. I don't hate that at all. But, oh, we can't do it because we're going to fill the flex. I was going to say, but what if But what if we did that? But we can't make that work because that would be too good. You think two skinny stacks? Yeah, I think so too. That's what I did. But then I used Everett. Okay, so I need I need running backs. Let's find a running back. Let's go with, we need cheapo running backs. So we're going to go with Samaj P. Ryan. And let's find a quarter. Let's find a running back. How about Rashad White? What Minnesota guy can... Ooh, wait. Ooh, chat. Chat. This is just going to be a, a, a game stack fest is what this Superflex is going to turn into. Okay, so we're going to take him out. We go to Minnesota. We're going to put him in. That leaves him with 4,900 left to spend on a flex. So we go to flex. Who do we want? Higby, Spears, Burks, Pickens, Dotson, Kelly, A-Chain, Woods... Ingram, Zamir White. You want Mixon and Joku instead? You guys, uh, Mixon and Joku. I did it. I was doing a whole thing. Now we have 5,500. Pick a flex. I'm not changing this again. 5,500 is going to be Rashad White. No, it's going to be Debo. How? There it is. There's our super flex lineup. We're going to win. All right. <laughs> We're going to win all the money. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for watching. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.